So you're the executive director of North Star Initiative. Um, how did you become involved in the organization? Well, I uh, was the director of a, another nonprofit in Lancaster County where we dealt with the homeless issue in a local school district area. And what we were seeing is some of the people that were coming through the door for food and clothing were living on that Route 30 corridor, um, the Lincoln Highway, where all the hotels that had become their residence. Not really understanding the dynamics of who some of those women were when they were coming in to get food. Uh, just we fed them, we clothed them through that ministry, and um, this opportunity became available. And some uh, peer sent it to me and said, I think this kind of aligns with what you're doing. Um, and as I looked into it and got more involved, it turns out that probably a, a large majority of those women we were serving on as thinking just a homeless issue were actually women that were being trafficked in Lancaster County. So it seemed like a, a real natural progression. Many people might not think that sex trafficking is a problem in right. Lancaster County. We know we live in this yeah. nice, you know, farmland area with the whole, um, you know, nice downtown area. So people probably think that's not something that happens here. It's something that happens in foreign countries or something like that. Exactly. Um, but it is a large problem around here, isn't it? <laughs> it is, and that's probably the number one question that we get asked. So is is this really happening in Lancaster County? Um, or are these are these women and girls that are actually local? Um, that's another big question. They just assume that maybe they're being brought in from uh, overseas, and the answer is yes and and yes. So the, it's a huge problem, mostly because Lancaster um, is a what we call pass through city in Pennsylvania. So we have lots of tourism, uh, which makes it very easy access for people to come in and leave and not really even be noticed. We also have major highways and thoroughfares that cross through Lancaster County, which gives a very easy access for trafficking to happen, and they can bring the women and girls in, and they can get them out pretty much unnoticed. How would you actually define sex trafficking, or like what sort of issues in particular does North Star Initiative deal with? Well, we, we are um, an organization, and we're kind of threefold. So part of what we do is we educate and we make aware just what we're doing now, talking about what is sex trafficking, um, is it an issue in our area, and just bringing in awareness so that people realize that, yeah, we have beautiful farmlands and, you know, you can not lock your door when you leave in the afternoon, but the, the horrible truth is there are women that are being trafficked up and down Route 30, um, sometimes five, six times a day, um, you know, seven days a week. Uh, so that's part of what we do. The other part is, um, opening up a restoration home, which is the harbor. And what we realize is that there are limited space across the United States for women that are coming out of trafficking. So they may self-identify as prostitution, which kind of is what has been the history. And when you dig into it, you realize that it wasn't, they're, they're not doing it on their own will, that it's a trafficking situation. But what do we do with them? So clearly if they're in this situation, maybe they don't have somewhere to go. Maybe it's either going homeless or to a homeless shelter uh, or end ending up at a domestic sex violence um, shelter. And that's, that's not really what they need. What they need is a holistic approach where you're actually touching the trauma and offering a, rest a restoration to it. Um, I actually read an article that was linked on the website about how a lot of the victims, I think it's something like 90% of the victims don't actually realize that they've been groomed and that they're actually being abused. That sounds dumbfounding to me. I, when I read that, I was like, how, how does that yeah. happen? So have you run into that with like women that you find that don't think there's a problem? We have. So, um, and it, it is more than it's not. And the grooming process is very manipulative. They're very good at what they do, meaning the traffickers. Um, they utilize women to groom women because, you know, let's be honest, we, there's a trust factor that goes when a woman approaches you for a job opportunity or a living situation, you're going to trust that and not feel as threatened if a man comes up immediately, we would have our guard up. Um, so they start utilizing women to actually groom the women into the process. Some are brought in thinking it's a romantic in interest. So, well, he loves me. We just need to be able to pay the, the rent this month. So I'm going to do this because that's, that's how I can contribute. And they lure them in that way. Um, the one that, most recent woman that we worked with, she did not think she was being trafficked. Um, she thought it was her choice. She realized what she was doing was selling herself, um, but they had convinced her that it was her choice, that they weren't keeping her there 
um, on without her own will. Um, and it was the education part that North Star brought to say, do you get, do you recoup any of the money? Do you keep the money? Well, no, I don't. Um, are you free to come and go as you please, or is there a schedule? Well, no, I'm on a schedule. Um, is there a um, is there a repercussion if you don't meet your quota every day? Well, yes, I get beat severely. Or you know, are you being supplied drugs, which is also the hook that keeps these women involved? Well, yes, I am. And once she started actually going through the process and the checklist, if you will, she realized like, oh wait a minute, I'm I'm probably not in control of this situation. I am actually being trafficked. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah, um, it's yeah. <laughs> so obviously there, you know, there is a problem. We established that. So how did? Could you tell me a little bit about how North Star got started? Sure. North Star um, basically started from uh, Jen Sensnick, who was the founder of North Star, and it was kind of her vision. She lives on that end of Lancaster County, near that Route 30 corridor. Um, and on traveling to work, she kept seeing the same kind of situation and the same women kind of hovering around a particular business there. I thought something was just amiss there. And the more that she dug into it and started working with law enforcement in the area, they realized that they, those women were actually being trafficked. Um, and at that point, she just thought, you know what, this, this can't be happening in Lancaster County. Like, my kids come up and down. People just, we all drive up right. and down this road and never once think that that's happening. And she decided to birth, if you will, a North Star initiative to make the community aware and to get on board with the dream of one day opening a restoration home mm -hmm. for the women. Okay, so that leads us to to the home. So um, we're actually sitting in the house called the Harbor. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so could you tell me kind of how this got started and what's going to happen here? Right. So um, as North Star went along, they realized that this was the next step for us, that this is kind of what we were being called to do, not only the education and awareness piece, but we really needed to offer that restoration and healing for these women and to get them back into a, a society in a healthy, healthy way. Uh, so this property came available. It was uh, a group home previous and a ministry here, so it was a natural progression. We bought the property um, working on some renovations with the idea of bringing 10 women in on a six month to two year program, okay. depending on their level of trauma, um, to just deal with a holistic approach with the women. How did the women get referred to the house? I mean, how do you decide who, who Yeah, here? so there will be an application process, if you will, um, mostly will call from, come from law enforcement. So we have partnerships with the local county law enforcement agencies, but we also have a great partnership with the Pennsylvania State Police, who are doing most of the sting operations um, with the trafficking, especially in our area and the Philadelphia area. Um, so they certainly have been referring quite a few women to us, um, but we also work, will work with social service providers. So there are other organizations like NIMBY, Not In My Backyard, She's uh, Somebody's Daughter, that they have actually started referring women to us as well. They they deal with different aspects of trafficking, but don't have the restoration home. But know that we're here and so you're getting referrals open. already, and it hasn't. Opened. Yeah, that, that, oh yeah. Goodness. So as soon as we probably bought the home, and I, I came on board last a year ago, and um, it's weekly, we get referrals, and the hardest thing has been to not be open. Um, just having to say we just we can't take them and you're hearing the pleading voice from a social service provider or from law enforcement saying we just pulled her out of the hotel room and she has nowhere to and go there's nowhere to go yeah. oh my goodness. Um, so over the house opens in October yes oh, okay. so we're slated okay. to open in October um, we're in the final phase of renovating and um, furnishing the house and also in the final phase of hiring our last restoration case managers and life coaches what are the age ranges? Like, what, what's the typical age of, of a girl who might end up living here? Uh, we'll be the adult population here. Okay. So our group of women are going to be 18 and older. Okay. And we will probably see everything from 18 and, and on up and in between. Um, there are group homes and a definite need for adolescent trafficking because it's it's an issue and more money is is made on girls that are 12 and 10 years old than there actually are of 18 and 19. And what kind of services will actually be provided in the house? So that we were going to um, have a holistic program care. And by that I mean we are going to um, basically deal with their spiritual, mental, physical well-being of the women. So some of the programs, their day will be very structured. Um, they'll have individual counseling therapy 
sessions. They'll have group counseling sessions. Uh, we're going to teach them life skills, just the basic, how do I cook a meal, a, a meal that's healthy for me? Um, what does it look like to take care of myself physically um, without dressing provocatively? What does that look like? We're going to touch the education component. Some of these women do have, don't have a, their high school diploma, and clearly we need to work on that. So we'll have a GED program. Then we're going to also look at what technical skills that we can give them in a two-year trade, hoping to partner with uh, perhaps Stevens Trade in our community, That's where they can get a STEM career, which will put them on the road to being able to have an earned income that will support them without having to be lured back into this. So a sustainable kind of life. It is. I mean, and on top of that, we're going to have art therapy because it's been proven that that is a great avenue for these yeah. women um, and physical physical um, component where they can get healthy and maybe do some yoga or some cross training, whatever that is, as, as just different and positive ways to release the stress and the and deal with the trauma. That That's a really all around in. kind of life. Holistic. So it's just changing everything. everything. <laughs> Basically, we're going to take their world and we're going to turn <laughs> it upside, upside down, down, and it's probably going to feel like that very yeah. much for them. Um, and then just having culinary, that's going to be a huge therapeutic plus um, educational um, and having groups come in to do Bible studies and just work with the women on what healthy relationships look like. So as part of their program, we kind of viewing it as a three-tiered program that they'll go to each level as they graduate from the, the basics. At the end, they need to be introduced to what a healthy male relationship looks like because they don't have that. Um, and that's where we'll rely on some really strong volunteers and staff to come in and show them. Or what is it like to work for, you know, an employer that maybe isn't the nicest employer in the world? And how to, what does that mean? Right. And we'll go through all that life skills coaching with them. Great. Um, you said you've been here for a year, mm -hmm. around there. Yeah. Do you have any particular stories you could share that affected you that you've run into so far? I, I think the biggest has been... Um, the referrals that we're getting. You know, I, I realize that trafficking is an issue. I've seen the women that were coming in to the other nonprofit that I worked for. Um, you know, so I had that touch with them. But I think it's when you get the call from the people at the state police, and she's 19, and she graduated from a local high school, and she played soccer, you know, on the weekends, and she was plugged into her youth group or into the school, and they're calling because she's being trafficked and she's now strung out on heroin or K2. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a mom with children that age, it just, it's gut-wrenching because that could be anybody's daughter. Um, you know, we, we try to safeguard our kids and social media and we try to like say, you know, this is what you do and these are the lookouts. But the, the, the ultimate reality is these people know what they're doing and they're, they're very good at what they do, unfortunately. What can parents do? I mean, do you have any advice for parents yeah. out there on ways to avoid? I, I think it's conversation. Things. So it's it's a topic that's gritty, right? right? Nobody really wants to talk about sex trafficking, and yeah. certainly not with your your teen girls. Um, but you have to have that conversation because, unfortunately, it's a reality in our country. Um, sex trafficking is now number two in organized crime, right on below drugs, because of the amount of money that is made off of that industry. And I think it is a conversation to have with your kids to say, you know, you know, how many times have we had the social media conversation, right, mm -hmm. about you got to be responsible, watch what you post, don't, you know, if you don't know that person, but it truly is one of the hooks or the job interview. You know, you see the signs that say, come make $15 an hour, very nondescript. Right. Yeah, that's, that's probably not a good good hook because right. they are using that as well to get a room full of prospective victims promising you a job and the next thing you know you're you're being trafficked um, you know and, and open dialogue that would be my my biggest thing is what we try to do and say if it doesn't feel right if it you know my thing is if it doesn't look right doesn't smell right it doesn't feel right it's not it's not right and you need okay. to come to me and we need to like talk this through yeah, I think that's good advice because I think a lot of parents want, again, it was the same article that I saw before. It was a dad talking about his daughter and she was 12 and getting mm -hmm. texts from, yeah. you know, an older man. And you, you think of, you know, you see the things like you're walking through Walmart and keep your kids close because you right. imagine, you know, with sex trafficking, someone's going to come and grab your child away from you and run out the door. But so many times it's not 
that traumatic. It's, it's like, subtle. Yeah, it's like someone on a website just contacting your kids, trying to become their friend, mm -hmm. and then trying to turn it into more than that. So. And and that scenario does happen, and it happens locally, but that's the sensational side yeah. of it, is what I, I guess I like to say. The reality is it's subtle. It's the ever chipping away of mm -hmm. what you feel is acceptable with you, your kids. Um, it's just the, the grind of well, that seemed okay, and he, it was still a safe situation, so let's take it one step further. And that's what they do. Or they lure them in with peers of their own age. Um, just very manipulative, very subtle, and before you know it, um, and drugs play a large part of it, they just do. You know, there's, there's always have to be that hook of how are we gonna keep them in, entangled in this trafficking situation, and that's the unfortunate. Uh, reality is that drugs play a large part of it. So what is the, the overall hope for the future for North Star? I mean, I guess the ultimate hope would be that you don't don't need to have a place like the yeah, harbor because exactly. the problem isn't here. Is that we're empty, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> it is one of yeah. the few uh, organizations where you hope that you, hope you, you don't a have business. to have yeah. an organization. Yeah, goodness gracious. Yeah, I, well, I, I think ultimately, one, we need the house up and functioning and um, the program to be a success. What I want to see are the success stories so that maybe the next time you come to talk to us, I can say, well, she's doing this and she's, you know, she's rocking it at her new job and she has an apartment and she's just, you know, she got her kids back. You know, just that is, that's the ultimate goal for North Star. Um, but in all reality, it's probably opening up other um, housing group housing situations, adolescent, and then there's the whole male um, housing situation and it, it needs to be addressed. And it's a little it's a little tougher because that brings in other components of shame and just not being reported because of what's actually being happened. Um, so we'd like to, to also educate about that, that this isn't just a teen girl, 20-something girl right. issue. It's, it's a child issue. Yeah. It's a human issue. Really? daunting but this is a great start so yeah there yeah <laughs> it's good stuff daunting is actually a great doing. word yeah. <laughs> it's the oh my gosh what am I doing <laughs> but no it uh you know it's it we always God's hands been all over this because just the favor that we've received and um you know and there's been there's been some pushback as you would expect but I think ultimately you're just we're just being faithful and stepping into what he needs us to do and that's to try to give a voice to people that absolutely do not have one um, and just give them a life hope I mean th these are women that have no hope left and are barely surviving so we'll do our small part <laughs>